Hello everyone, this is Nana and I'm Igazi and, and welcome, welcome back, back to our channel. So today we're going to be talking about a topic that for some reason I don't even know how we've never discussed this before. But today we're going to be talking about what feminism really is. Yes. And in honors of Women's History Month, you know March is Women's History Month, we have to at least have one video talking about something that's relative and important to, to us women. and to us. Because I just feel like there's so much... Um, with this third wave feminism I was talking about, there's a lot of confusion about the simple, very simple, simple, simple definition of what feminism is. Feminism ultimately is defined as wanting, uh, believing in the equal rights and opportunities for men yes, and women. The theory of the political, economic, and social equality of the sexes. That's, that's how Western Mary defines it. feminism. That is it. It doesn't mean that you hate men. It doesn't mean you don't want to get married. It doesn't mean that you want to be the breadwinner. It doesn't mean that you want your man to sit at home. You want to take authority. It doesn't mean that you want every man to go to jail. It doesn't mean that you think every man is a, um, a sec is, has sexually assaulted women. That like I feel like feminism has nothing to do with any of the things I just listed. It's simply just wanting equal rights, equal pay. If I'm going to do the same job that a man is doing why am i getting paid 80 cents to the dollar why am i getting paid 90 cents to the dollar we're both waking up at 5 a.m we're both coming home at 7 p.m to our families if anything i should even be getting paid more because i'm sacrificing theoretically if i'm supposed to be a homemaker theoretically i'm sacrificing more than probably the man is you know so that's all what it's really talking about and i just feel as if in this current generation all i keep hearing is third wave feminism third wave feminism to the point i had to actually go up just before this video i ran and looked it up because i just mm -hmm. feel like people have been throwing that word around it's very confusing about the times that it started but first wave is basically up from like the beginning when women couldn't really do anything 1800s up until i believe like 1920 when women were allowed to start voting so basically it's the first wave feminism from what i understand is women fighting for like just the ability to vote just like that big thing that basic Right, Basically. that men had since the inception of this country. The second wave, um, feminism talks more about the right to you know have a credit card under your own name, um, contraceptive use, things of that abortion. nature. Um, yes, abortion, abortion, things of that nature was more of second wave, and then the third wave feminism started around 1991, um, around the time of Anita Hill. Um, case against Clar the judge, Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas. Yeah, we hear about this talking up a lot because of Biden was one of the people on the like committee or something yeah, when this was I'm tried, and Hill. that's why they kept bringing up Anita Hill. But basically, it was about the women having a right to talk about sexual assault. So linked to Me Too. Movement. Yeah, then that's yeah. why the Me Too. We don't know what this fourth wave now, or people are still saying it's still third wave. There's a lot of you know a lot of lingo. We don't want that to take away from actually what's happening, the progress that's been made. But basically, at that point, it was like, are women are allowed to talk about being raped in their marriage or, you know, being sexual assaulted, things of that nature that were so commonplace in the workplace that met, that people experienced or didn't really talk about because it was just a norm. It was just a norm for your boss to hit at you or make unnecessary sexual advances. And you just have to take it. It's still happening in a lot of parts of the world. You know, it happens. Mm -hmm. It's even happening in America. But other parts of the world, it's still normal. It's still unknown if you want to get this job. You have to sleep with this manager, mm -hmm. you know, like, and it's almost like normalized and people just accept it as the way it is. A lot of people think, you know, what are we fighting for? Women work now. What are professional like, schools. What are are, why are y'all complaining? So professional mm -hmm. schools are mostly even women now. Med schools are mostly women. Pharmacy schools are mostly women. Women are e equalizing, if not even overpowering the workforce. So what are we still fighting for? Because despite all of this, a woman can go and say someone did something to her and people still don't believe her. So despite all the advances we've made on paper, there's still a lot of work to be done. The job that I'm working on right now, they give you three months maternity leave unpaid. Mm -hmm. That is ridiculous. And that is because it's a woman's issue, right? So if men were the ones having children, I don't believe that any job would do that. Mm -hmm. No job would tell them, oh, and you the can system, only take three months off and we're not going to even pay you. The system is not designed for women. It's designed for back in the 70s when most women stayed at home anyway. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like you work, you get three months unpaid, you, it's better than nothing. Mm -hmm. So at least you'll have it your job has back. adapted to what we actually are experiencing now as in the average woman works full time. So we need better. Of course, we need better women's health care. We need better laws in terms of mat um, maternity leave. It's ridiculous. There's no way I could have a child and, and be back in three months. Mm -hmm. Not pay and unpaid. And at least unpaid. do three months. Pay women you're using their vacation days their time off their sick days to have those three months a lot of women cannot afford to stay out of work for three months because a lot of them are breadwinners but my issue i have specifically really really with this whole feminist issue is that people want to tell you if you're feminist or not like i believe you know chimamanda that's my girl i think we should all be feminists 
just because a lot of things, all these, a lot of things that we do don't make sense. Feminism benefits men, men and, and women. women. You, you telling your son he don't need to know how to cook. I have cousins almost 40. They're not married. Every food, every meal they're buying out. They're buying food. They don't know who's cooking it. They're getting fat. Their stomachs are out to here because they don't know how to cook. Why? Are, like, these are basic things. Cooking is essential for it's a life skill. It's a life skill, man or woman. You should be the same way you tell your daughter to come in the kitchen. Your son should be, my brother cooks. He helps me in the kitchen every time I'm cooking because I know one day I don't want no woman to be telling him, oh, I don't want no woman seducing him with her little jello fries. Mm -hmm. I don't want no woman frying goat meat and bringing it to him. And this woman is devil, scorned from devil. But because he's so hungry, mm -hmm. he'll fall in love with this woman. This stuff is happening. It's, it's, no, no. I grew up in a house, I shoveled snow, okay? I saw my mom, she mowed the lawn, okay? We took out the trash, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So if you want to come here and talk about the gender roles, this is not the right place to come. Like, I've done what technically men are supposed to do, quote unquote. Same way men should be doing what technically what women are supposed to do, quote unquote. You, you watching your kids when your wife goes to work is not babysitting. It's not babysitting. It's called taking care of your children. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? A lot of narrative that we have, it just, it doesn't make any sense. I am a feminist, yes, but I want to get married. I like men. I want to be a stay-at-home mom when my kids are young, but I am also a feminist. But none of that takes away from me being a feminist. I just want equal rights for men and women. I don't want to be a man. I don't want to be a man. I'm not changing my sex. I don't want to be a man. But let's be real. If I could have chose my sex to be a man or a woman before I came out of the room, I probably would have chose to be a man. Do you think men have life easier? Yes! Yes! In America, but I don't think that's In America, right. yes! America. I do think so. I do think that not back then. I could, if you told me back in the day, hundreds of years ago, do men have it easier? No. They have to provide. When we're sitting at home, they have to... Any, any money that's coming in the house is then... It's stressful. But nowadays, when people are doing 50-50, when women are even the breadwinners, I don't see how men, how you can say a man's life is more stressful. A woman has to go to work, and also while she's going to work and working just as much as a man or even more, she's responsible for her children. She's responsible for her house. She has to go to she, childbirth. She has to go to childbirth. She has to ministry every month and deal with PMS. I don't think how you, I don't even know how you can compare being a man and a woman. I think the most important thing with feminism is is just that it gives you an option. As exactly. a woman, it gives you options opposed to I had to sit in my house. I couldn't go to work. You may still choose to do that, but you know you have the and option of doing, wrong else, of doing nothing something else if that. you don't want to do that either. There's women who are very career driven. They want to work. They want to, you know, they want to do all these things. And there's women who are who are fine being homemakers and, you know, it's every different strokes for different folks. I think that the biggest, the most important thing about fem feminism is that it gives women options and let us have make choices for ourselves instead of those choices being yeah, imposed on us. us by society, by our spouses, by our family. So I think that's very important, but... I definitely think a lot of people have the wrong idea about feminism and they don't really understand what it is. They just think it means I don't need a man. And, that, or I and, want to and, be and it's single. not even just men. It's women too that have the wrong yeah, idea. Yeah, I don't need a man. I want to be it's single. It's the wrong wrong idea of feminism that like, oh, oh, you don't, like some women will look on another woman because she decides to stay home for two years for a job. Mm -hmm. They look down at her like, oh, you don't want to work? How could you sit at home? How can you do, that's her choice. Mm -hmm. As long as, as long as that's okay, she's doing it because, and she's okay with it, her husband's okay with it, her family's okay with it. Like for example, I have like you know a cousin. They have a few like a few children, and then the, the uh, someone was like, "Oh, why isn't she working? Can't she take care of the children?" I'm just looking at her like, to my aunt, I was like, "How's that your business? Mm -hmm. Are they calling you, telling you, oh, we're struggling? Did they call you and tell you that um they need money? Did they call you and tell you that they that they're not living good? Mm -hmm. Like, why are you so worried about that fact? And this is a woman saying this. This is a woman talking about another definitely woman being in this part of the Western world. Women that don't work are definitely looked at as being lazy. Yeah." They look down upon. Like if you say someone like where our parents are from, like someone like Nigeria, it's still common for a woman not to work. Yeah. And, on her husband. and even there, I think things are changing. Things are changing, but people are shaming women, them sometimes. There's still women who are 100. Even I know YouTubers who would say they're they're relying on their husband, mm -hmm. even with the salary they have, even if the money they make. There's women in Nigeria who can't buy themselves. They can they, even to buy a phone. They have to look at their husband. Like they just have that idea that a man's supposed to do everything for you. It's not necessarily wrong with that if they can afford to do that. But my idea is that I would love to stay at home. I would love to have the luxury. But just my personal opinion, based on where I am in the world, I just feel like there's only but so much someone can give you that will satisfy you. Hmm. Unless I marry a man who's really rich. I just feel like the property when I, of that is very low. When I think about what I can make, my salary, me staying at home is like punishing myself. Because I know, at least for long term, because I know what I can make. And I know that that person can't give me what I can make. So why would I stay at home? But you remember that time we were in a church group, right? So I remember the time we were like in part of our young adult group. And you guys even made a statement that I want to stay at home. 
when I have children. And she said, but my husband has to give me half of what I make. And like everyone just started wild. Like, oh, how could you be a pharmacist? How could you go study pharmacy? Take out loans, go to school at 10 years, blah, blah, blah. How could you do all of that? And you want to stay at home? And because he said, it's my knowledge. It's for myself. I went to school for, and it was just so, yeah, it was just an interesting perspective. I was like, that's really Many true. people in, in Nigeria go to school and, and make weird things. Degrees. They never use a degree. That's it's true. just for yourself. It's your self-knowledge. It's true. Like I said, in this part of the world, is just so expensive. Mm -hmm. So it's, not, it's different for you. I didn't have loans. I could sit and say, I've never used my degree, mm -hmm. but I have so much debt. But because so. if you just say your husband has to pay you half of your salary, you're reaching it. But it's even reasonable. Half of half my salary, salary. salary. That means I'm still giving up half of my salary for my family and my house. I feel like that's reasonable. Half of your salary, because that's not reasonable. Half of my salary? Let's, let's say you work and you make let's say you whatever job let's say you make eighty thousand let me just give you a salary let me just give a general you want somebody you to give you forty thousand someone can give you forty thousand dollars are you doing after tax with even if you make eighty thousand you don't come home with eighty thousand okay i'm saying even are you doing let's say tax? the person after tax makes seven sixty thousand mm -hmm. they have to give me thirty thousand that's after they pay all the bills and they do everything because financially. Because you, you sound crazy. That's very Because think about it. Even if... You, 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 what job will you have to but, give you 30 But I'm saying that, God, that... But that's why I said staying at home is not really realistic. Okay. Because okay. I know the my earning potential. I'm just giving an example. I don't know. I, that salaries are not real. Those are random salaries. I'm just saying I know my earning potential. So for me to stay at home, that person has to have money. I'm not going to stay at home with a guy giving me $100, $100, $50, $50, $300. $300. I'm not, I can't sustain that. Um, but the problem trying to explain is that I still I'm have saying every month the guy would have to drop 3k. The problem trying to explain is that I still have debt. I went to school, mm -hmm. I still have to pay my loans. The problem trying to explain to if I didn't have loans, I'd even true. say so 25%. Yes, because this is what I'm staying and at home. I have can do it for God you. can do it for me like this. I know who I'm, I know who I serve. Mm -hmm. So, what I'm trying to say for me to ask someone to give me 30 or 40 thousand dollars a year, like you know, that's being a reasonable. I, I know in this part of the world, it's, it's hard, it's hard. But I don't think I'm being like random. Like, come on, people marry NBA players. How much are they giving them every month? That's true. You're people right. marry celebrities. How much You're are they right. making every month? People have children with a man has money. I'm getting paid twenty k, thirty k a month just right. off that child. So you saying it's reasonable? So man, me to tell you a like year three, a to month. give you three, thirty, forty thousand a year? Like that's not that that's, bad. Like, but just the average man. He just can't has to have it. a good job. I just like I said, the type of guys that are trying to talk to me, I know they can't do it. <laughs> but I'm just saying, like. <laughs> You have to be well off because you can't be making fifty k and give me forty k. Exactly. You have to be making at least I say two hundred k and then give me forty k. Give but me fifty k after tax. How much did the person? That's what I'm saying. Down? At least exactly. after tax, I said they made one forty. Give me forty, and they still have hundred thousand to pay all the bills. <laughs> so that's the point I'm saying. Like, it sounds so unrealistic, but you have if a guy has a good job, it's very doable. He can do it. It's very so you take my question is that that money is giving you one half of your salary, right? Mm -hmm. Are you gonna buy groceries with them? Yeah, like, I buy groceries. Are you gonna pay? I can bill? pay bills, no bill, just my loans, and I buy the groceries. Loans and groceries. I could think about it. You guys have your children. You guys, think, you guys have to think about it. If I stay at home, we're in a, we are in America. If you get in the living babysitter, you could pay up to eight hundred dollars a week. That's real for one child. Calculate me staying at home eight hundred dollars a week times four. That's three thousand two. Mm. Why can't he give it to me? That's true. I'm gonna say that's true. That's three thousand two. Just give me the three thousand two. I'm the child. I'm cooking every meal. We're you not buying me. Chinese. If two people are working, no, you can't be cooking every day. We have to eat out every second. Every other day, we're buying Chinese. We're buying that Chinese. Chinese. Have to we're buying out. Food. We're, we're eating microwave like, food. We're, food. Be, be we're doing like this. Food. We're doing that. If I stay at home, I can take care of my own child. See how they're developing. Take pictures with them. Not to worry about no one. Then I can cook my own food. Everything I eat, I can cook. Do you know how much money I'm saving my family by me staying at home? It's true, because if, if they, people pay babysitters, but you're talking about. The only time you can say benefit, like when you have like a mother living with you, someone mm -hmm. that you wouldn't really be paying, you get like an auntie, you get someone who paid them a very low salary, but to get a real babysitter, it's like childcare is very expensive in this part of the world. Even to take them to daycare could be up to five, six hundred dollars a week. That's true. So when I think about it, people are just hearing the amount, but like I'm being, you break I'm it being down. reasonable. But how do you split bills? Because I remember even I talked to my aunt about it. She said she does believe in 50 50. You bring half, the other person brings half. But I feel like 50 50 doesn't really make sense. It should be a percentage. Okay. Because let's say one partner, let's say one person makes 200,000. Other person makes fifty thousand. Mm. How could you do fifty fifty? You making two hundred thousand still gonna end up paying more bills. You can do fifty because just at the two hundred thousand dollars person is gonna have a lot of money in savings. They have a lot of money to buy but their the rent. But gonna have to go have a lot of money family, to buy. So their... I still end up losing. Isn't it gonna be towards my kids and my family? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. You could do fifty fifty. Just the person that makes the fifty k versus two hundred k. Basically, the whole salary would just be on bills. Yeah, but it's kind of unfair. unfair. If your person making fifty thousand has no savings. If something happens tomorrow, you're gonna be paying for everything. Because they don't have savings, they don't have extra money. So I still feel like you marrying someone who doesn't make a lot, a lot of money, it still affects you. Even if you say you do 50-50, it comes to a point of 50% even runs out. 
then who are you looking to the person because that makes more that's true so it doesn't really make sense but let us know you don't want to be too long-winded how you feel about this talk about a lot of things feminism um gender roles ch child rearing money jobs mm -hmm. a lot of things you hit in this um hit in this video and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and your mind share this video with everybody you know and we'll see you in our next video bye, bye.